Hello again, my friends. Uh, this is Lino Tadros, and in this uh, third and final part of the SQL LLM um, video, I would like to show you how to do the RAG operations uh, with Llama Index. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and create a brand new file. This one we'll call it 02, and we'll call this one uh, Llama Index dash sql dot pi okay again you can call it whatever you want it is fine and in here i'm going to be bringing in some imports i'm going to bring in an import for the os and you'll see why i'm doing that because i'm going to bring in os environment uh, so i can save the key for the open ai api key and then i'm going to use sql alchemy and in sql alchemy i'm going to be bringing in the create engine the metadata table column string integer select these are things that has nothing really to do yet with Llama Index, but SQL, SQL Alchemy will help me a lot to be able to dissect uh, my URI for the database and being able to understand how to create an engine out of it, metadata for the schema, and also all the tables and columns and so on. All right, after that, I'm gonna start using Llama Index from the core. I'm gonna use a SQL database like we did with Langchain earlier. It's a similar, more powerful when it comes to RAG. And the Llama Index LLM OpenAI, we're going to import the OpenAI. Remember, OpenAI is not the only way to do this. You can actually bring in this using Claude from um, Anthropic. You can use Grok. You can use Gemini, uh, Llama, whatever you'd like. You can definitely try it with different things. And finally, I'm going to import OpenAI itself. Sounds good? The next two lines are, there's so many different ways to do this. I just wanted to show you different ways. I can say that os.environment, the open API key, and I can pass in my uh, open AI from my platform that openai.com. And then I'm gonna actually open up the open AI API key directly coming in from that uh, environment from open API key. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. You can have a .env file for the environment and it will load it automatically. Uh, you can actually pass the, the key itself in the call to the OpenAI itself. There is a lot of different ways to do that. All right, the next part is we've seen this in the previous video as well with Langchain. I'm just going to create my URI. I'm going to let it know that I'm going after my local host for a SQL Express instance called SQL 2022. The database name itself is called TTBDB and the driver I'm going to use the .NET based SQL client 11 to bring it in. And then there are three very important lines of code that I would like to show you. The first one, I'm going to create a variable called engine, and I'm going to use the create engine that came from SQL Alchemy to pass it that URI. That by itself will automatically create the engine ready for me to be passed uh, to whatever I need. There is another one here called metadata. It's also coming from SQL Alchemy. And it says create all, and I'll pass the engine. Maybe you do not want all 256 different tables. So you may, maybe the metadata, you get to choose which table you want to do or bring in to the LLM, for instance, later on. When you say create all and pass the engine, that means I want the kitchen sink. Um, I actually do not want to learn about the relationship and the in, uh, referential integrity between the tables and Sitefinity or whatever CMS system or whatever SQL database, really. I'm just going to be passing the entire engine that I brought in and I'll bring in everything, the entire schema from there as well. And finally, I'm going to use the LLM, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Llama Index Core SQL database to pass in on the SQL database constructor here, I'm passing the engine that I brought in and the metadata object that I created based on all the schema coming in from all the tables. And honestly, before I even get to any LLM work, I just want to see what this SQL Alchemy thing is doing for me. So let me go ahead and say from SQL Alchemy import text, and I'm going to do a with statement in here. I'm going to connect the engine, which is my URI in here for the database itself. Alrighty, I'm going to give it a, a name as a connection and we'll say rows, all right, and we'll say execute the connection. I'm going to be passing select username email from sf underscore user. Of course, I don't want to be able to, to know what, what, uh, what table name is or what the, uh, the column names are. I don't want to do that. I just want to test the SQL alchemy itself. No LLM is involved in here. I'm going to say fetch all. And now, if you remember from the previous video, that table has four different records in it for Lino, Kobe, Justin, and TTB. So when I actually print out each and every single one of these rows, I should see all of them. So before I even go any further, I just want to make sure that this will work just fine. So let me come back in here. We'll say Python, oops, Python, and we will go ahead and pass in um, dot backslash zero two 
There you go. This is the one. And I'm going to say run this guy. And if I've done my job right, I should be able to come back in here now. And I should see all four records coming in printed one per line uh, using uh, this engine.connect and iterating through all the different results coming in from the select statement of the Fed show. And indeed, it did. Notice in here, it brought in um, the uh, the Kobe Tadros, um, and it brought in Lino, and TTB, and Justin. So it did the job correctly. But again, there is no LLM in here. This is just SQL Alchemy. I'm fetching everything myself using a select statement. I just wanted to show you this, what SQL Alchemy is bringing to the table at this point. All right, now the fun part starts. The fun part starts if I start bringing in some LLM. So let me bring in an LLM in here. And I'm going to say open AI. I'm going to say temperature equals 0.1. That keep it, keep it real. <laughs> Don't hallucinate on me. And then I'm going to use the model GPT-40. Notice I'm not passing the API key. And the reason for that is I have an open AI.API key that I got from the OS.environment automatically. Again, I can delete these two lines and I can pass the API key myself in here if I want to. Just wanted to show you different ways than the previous video as well. But this here, I'm going to initialize my LLM to know exactly what temperature, what model, and there are other parameters you can pass to get the top, uh, the top K and everything else if you're familiar with how LLMs work as well. All right, now let's go ahead and have some fun. I'm going to do this like three different times to show you what exactly is going on. So this one, I'm going to be bringing in from the Llama Index Core Query Engine. I'm going to import something called NL SQL Table Query Engine. And this guy is about the natural language SQL Table Query Engine. This is a very important line in here. I'm going to create a variable. I call it Query Engine. And I'm going to initialize this NL SQL Table Query Engine. I'm going to be passing the SQL database object that I brought in earlier. This is the one that has the engine and the entire schema. And I don't have to pass the table. I can delete this part in here completely. And I can just say LLM equals LLM. That will also work. But that means I'm bringing in all the tables in the schema because I said uh, create all. Alrighty, but I have a choice in here saying, I know that the agent I'm creating is about users, their roles, their profiles, and the link between them and the relationships and all that stuff. So, but I'm not trying to get into the blogs or the news. So I can help the system out uh, by saving money on the tokens, to be honest with you, and say tables equals, and then I'll create an array and pass the tables that I know that I need. I'm not gonna need anything other than these four tables. Or you can just completely remove this and just pass the SQL database and the LLM and let the system figure it out. But there is too many tokens being used at that point, okay? So with the query string, I can actually say, what roles does the user Lino at the trainingboss.com have? Oh, okay. So that means if I go back to the database right now, I'm not gonna be able to get this information from SF users. SF users will only tell me that there is somebody called Lino at the trainingboss.com. But I have to go to SF roles and I'll find out that there is nine or 10 different roles. One of them is administrator. Another one is author. Another one is designer, anonymous. There is a lot of different roles inside Finity. And then there is the user profile that contains actually a lot of information about this Lino guy, all right? And then finally, I'll have something called SF user link. This table will actually have the ID, not the name, not the email address, but the GUID for Lino at the trainingboss.com. And it associated with the GUID of the SF role. That means this Lino guy using an ID could be an administrator and an author and a designer and a backend user. So it might be repeated multiple times instead of this SF user link. But I'm not going to explain any of that. I'm just in English, I'm going to say what roles does the user Lino at the trainingboss.com have? And the response in here, we will just go ahead and use the query engine, which is the NL SQL table query engine, passing that query, and I'm going to be printing out the response. Anybody would like to guess if the system would be able to figure it out? Remember, there is 256 tables. I am helping it out, saying focus on these four. But even if I remove that, it will still be able to take care of it, except it might take a little bit more time because there will be negotiation going back and forth between Llama Index and the LLM itself. All right, let's go ahead and save this and, uh, and uh, run it. I'm going to go ahead and control, control S. Let me make this a little bit bigger and we'll say CLS to clear. And I'm going to say Python and oops, don't want to do that. And we'll do this and we'll say, go ahead and do it. All right. Drums rolling, please. It would be really cool if the system really finds out between four different tables, 
what are the roles that leno.thetrainingboss.com has and you can ask this question in so many different ways in English and it will still be able hopefully to figure it out let's give it a few seconds in here and we'll see when the answer comes back first of all that's the first part I didn't delete it so it still will tell me what the users are and now it's doing the second part the user with the email leno.thetrainingboss.com has the following roles administrators and backend users this is amazing this is correct i am the an administrator and a back end user as well so it was able to figure it out and be able to get the information from all four tables at the same time all right folks i want to go a little bit further than that you know i don't want to do this operation every time i have a question that's an expensive operation to be able to get the schema for all of these things and come back is there a way for me instead of doing this on the fly every single time and spend the money for the tokenization every time couldn't I take the entire 256 tables and embed them and vectorize them inside of a database like Pinecone, uh, Fice, AI uh, uh, Search? Um, I mean, you name it, there are tons of different vector databases out there that you can use. Even on your own machine, you can use ChromaDB to do that. So look at how cool this is. If I come back in here and do it in a different way, let me go ahead and, and show you what this is. I'm going to actually bring in Llama Index Core Retrievers. So now I'm not using with a table query, I'm using a retriever called the uh, natural language SQL retriever, okay? And I'm going to create my own variable, I'm going to initialize this NL SQL retriever, still passing the same SQL database. I don't have to pass this, by the way, the table array, I can delete this, that means I'm going to be bringing in the kitchen sink, all 256 tables inside of Sitefinity. But again, I would like to actually create a vector store based only on these four tables and the relationship between them only. And then at the end, I can use something called return raw equal to true. What does the return raw equal to true means? Well, it's a Boolean, true or false whether to return, return plain text dump of the SQL results or parsed into nodes. So I would rec definitely re recommend you to try it once with true, once with false. If it's true, it's going to just bring in plain text dump of the SQL. So you'll have to read it however you'd like. But otherwise, it will be nodes coming back. It might be a better way to parse this using a string parser from JSON, for instance, if you would like to do that in a user interface or something like that. Alrighty. And then finally, I'm going to create a result variable and I'm going to call in the NL SQL retriever. I'm going to say dot retrieve and I'm going to ask my question. What the system is doing right now is going to take my question and it will embed and also um, trying to vectorize that specific question into the sphere that it has been used for the embedding itself that already did on the NL SQL retriever. And it will be able to find out a match and will bring me back the results and I will do that. But remember, I am not asking a question. This is not a query. This is a retrieval. So when I run this, don't get confused and think it will answer the question. This is just trying to create a SQL statement based on what I've done, based on the retrieval that I created for the SQL itself. So don't confuse. We're going to finish this up in the next step. I just wanted to show you what will happen when I run that right now. Let me go ahead and say S, uh, control S for saving this. And I'm going to go ahead and run it one more time. Again, it's going to do the same thing it did before. It's going to give me the four users. Then it's going to tell me that Lino, the training boss, is an admin and a back-end user. And finally, it will ask the question, what roles does the user Kobe at the trainingboss.com have? So we'll give it, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And I have one more thing to show you after that. And I'm hoping that you are enjoying this. And while this is finishing, don't forget to like the video. And if you uh, want to see more information in the future and um, uh, videos that I'm making, please subscribe to the channel as well. And there it is. You see, the user with the email, Lino Tadros, is an administrator and a backend user. And then there is some mumbo jumbo because I didn't want it back as a... Uh, as a as a node as a parsed into nodes i said return raw equal to true so it returned the entire select statement raw in the text coming back itself so try it again by saying return equals to false and you'll get a lot more cleaner actually but notice back end users designer author so i can tell that the result coming back from the sql statement so what happens now if i would like to display this in a chat window maybe i'm creating a user interface and i'd like to to show this in a much more um, professional way for instance let's go ahead and do that